All right, is it working? Hey, hey, we're live, what do you know? Okay, so today what we're talking about really is exponential graphs, okay? Exponential graphs, or we'll call them functions, okay? Functions is a fancy word for us for graphs, but you know, graphs that are functions, right? So they're called exponential for the most obvious reason of all. You might say, well, what's that? Well, if the x is in the exponent, if the x or the variables in the exponent, they're exponential. Does that make sense? But how does exponential work? Well, I like the analogy. I don't know if you guys remember that. There, a long time ago, there was a commercial about rabbits, and this guy was in this store, and he was in a pet store, right? Do you remember that commercial? And he was on the phone, and Every time they came back to me, I had more and more rabbits, more and more rabbits, more and more rabbits, right? It just like grew, and they, they used the term growing exponentially, right? So growing exponentially means that things are going to grow with this kind of curve. So let's check it out. So number one, if I want to graph 4 times 1.12 to the x power. Okay, if I, let's see if I go to Desmos. School, where's my Desmos? Okay, let's go y equals 4 times 1.12 to the power of x, okay? All right, that's an exponential curve. And if we look at it enough, I love decimals because look what's happening. Now you can't see because my calculator, okay, there you go. Look what's happening. That's exponential. It gets big fast. You see that? It starts out slow. So think about the world population, okay? So for thousands upon thousands of years, humankind was right around in here, right? I mean, and then all of a sudden, we hit like the 19th century. People started living longer, and this is where we're at in the U.S. population, in the world population. And you can blame everything in this world I don't care what your political stance is or whatever, this is the problem with our world right here. Everything stems from this, truthfully. Overpopulation, there's too many people. The good part about that is there's a lot of people to solve a lot of problems, right? The bad part is there's a lot of people in our world. That's exponential, okay? So I do know on this graph, it has to start, it has to go through Four, okay? This graph is going to go through four for sure. That's by beginning amount, okay? And then I'm just going to do a rough sketch of it, but I want to make sure that it goes through four. So it's going to look something like this and then take off. So that's the that's the shape of an exponential growth, okay? What's the growth rate? Well, the growth rate is like a one plus point one two. So the growth rate is 12%. Okay, does that make sense? The one is important because you have to take your original population. So it's like taking 100% of the people you have and start adding 12%. The one has to be there. You have 100% of the population you have right now, and then you start adding 12% per year or whatever, okay? The y-intercept, of course, is four. Okay, thumbs up. That's obviously growth. Everybody agree? That is definitely growth, okay? Now, number two, if I take a look at two, this one's going to be decay, all right? So if I graph this one, now my Desmos y equals 100, parentheses, uh, 0 0.80. I don't need the zero, but there it is to the power of x, right? Okay. This one's decay. This is what we're hap well, this is what we're going to hope is going to happen to covid, right? We want this to happen to covid. It's just going to disappear, okay? Um, so that's decay rate and what's the decay rate? Well, we start with 100 times a, ready, one 
minus 0 0.20. Right, this number and this number are the same numbers, right? 1 minus 0 0.2. So you have 100% of your population and you're losing 20% per year or per whatever. So my decay rate is 20%, right? You guys okay? Is that, that's how I get my 80. So with my 100% of our population, to get 80, I'm losing 20% per year, okay? Y-intercept has got to be at 100. So I'm going to go ahead, well, what, 0, 100, there we go. So I'm gonna just going to go 100, 50. And again, I just need a general shape of the curve. I like it that it goes through the correct y-intercept. It looks like this. Okay. Now here's an interesting question. It will never, it will never go to zero. Okay. In theory, it will never go to zero. In theory. All right. In theory. In mathematical theory. But I mean, obviously, in population. Let's say it's, say it's a bacteria. You can't get you can't get half a bacteria, right? Does that make sense? So in theory, we'll never get to zero. Okay. All right. Domain range on both of these is all real numbers. Range, same thing. Y equals all real numbers because it goes forever wide. Oh, I'm wrong on the range. Doggone it! It must be must be Monday. Darn me. The range is y is greater than zero, but not equal to. Not equal to. It'll never be equal to zero. Okay. And the same thing here. Domain is x equals all real numbers, but the range is y is greater than zero. Not equal to zero, right? Never equal to zero, okay? All right. How am I doing? Thumbs up? Okay. So example three, a radioactive isotope decays at a rate of 15% per day. Per day, okay. If 40 kilograms are present now, find the amount in 60. So what we want to do is start with this equation, okay? So we've got our y equals a 1 plus or minus r to the t, okay? That's an exponential equation for us, okay? This is the one that we're going to use. So that's our formula that we're going to use a lot. And then what we know is A is always the beginning amount. So that's our beginning amount. That's our 40, okay? That's our beginning amount. So I'm going to write Y equals 40. 1. Now, is this, is this increasing or decreasing? Well, it decays, right? So I've got my plus or minus. We're going to go minus. We're going to go minus because in this example, it's decaying. It's dropping, right? So we're going to lose. 15% 0.15 per day. So T is per day, okay? So it says, first of all, find the amount in six days, okay? So one way you could do this is you could take 40 and then, you know, you could take 15% away, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again, or just use the formula, right? That's why we've made a formula. So use our formula, let's put our six days in for T, and then just use our calculator to get our answer. So we're gonna go, um, and I'm gonna make it into a function, I'm gonna say, um, let's see, P of T equals 40 minus, one minus 0.15 T, so I'm going to go P of 6 equals 40, 1 minus 0.15 to the 6th power, okay? So I just changed it to a function, that's all. Between these two, they're the same equation, but I like it in terms of population and time, right? So I'm just going to use my calculator, all right? I can do that clear. I'm going to go simply 40 parentheses. 1 minus 0.15 to the power of 6, right? And then my answer should be about 15.08. We'll say 15.1, okay? That's the amount of this radioactive isotope. So my answer is P of 6 is equal to about 15.1. I think that's in terms of grams. Yes, kil oh, kilograms. That's in terms of kilograms, okay? Okay, not too bad. I just plugged in the 6, 
I used my calculator. I got my answer, okay? Now, six days ago, well, that's not bad. We'll just let time be, we're gonna go back in time. We're gonna go back in time. So we found this stuff in the dirt, let's just say, and we're like, well, how much was there six days ago? So we'll just let T equal negative uh, six. Excuse the interruption. I need the following students headed to the wrestling room right away. Andrea Furiel, Darren Everest, Paola Guzman, Faith Perez, Alondra Torres. They're not here. And Brody Ward. Again, Andrea Furiel, Darren Everest, Paola Guzman, Faith Perez, Alondra Torres, and Brody Ward. Please head up to the wrestling room right away. Thank All you. Right. So it goes to, if I'm, if I'm thinking it's decaying, then six days ago there should have been a lot of it. Does that make sense, right? Six days ago there should be a lot of it. So my answer should be more than 40. And so if I just use my calculator, 40, parentheses, 1, minus 0.15, to the power of negative 6. Oops, negative 6. Yeah, about 100, about 106. So, I mean, this is, we found it in the dirt. If we'd gone and found it six days ago, there might have been 106.1 kilograms of it okay okay how am I doing so far not too bad okay you guys ready to turn the page all right negative exponents all right think fractions and move to make positive okay so here's the second piece of this okay we've done this before so luckily we did this in algebra 2 and I think we also did this in geometry right I think so Okay, ready? Negative exponents. You guys remember doing negative exponents? It's this easy, watch. This three to the negative two comes down. This x to the negative five comes down. So when I switch it, I make them positive, right? This x to the negative two, it comes up. Okay, remember doing this in algebra two? This y to the negative 4, it comes up. Now, everything else is just the way it is, right? So let's see what else we have. We have this 5 is here. I've got a y to the second is here, right? I've got a z3 here. And anything of zero power is the number 1. I don't really need the 1, okay? How am I doing? If they're a negative exponent, I moved it up or down to make it positive. To make it positive, I had to move it down or I had to move it up, okay? Anything in zero power is the number one, so now I'm just going to simplify this. Um, let's see. I can cancel two of these x's. We'll cancel two of these, so I can make this a x to the third, right? Um, this will make a y to the sixth. Um, this is 5 times 9. You guys are okay with 9. 5 times 9 is 4. 45, oops, that's a y, oh, that's an x to the third, that's a 45, and I have this one, I don't really need the one, but there's the one, okay, let's see what I have, I've got a mess, but I should have a 1y to the sixth over 45x to the third, okay, all right, oh, Anything with zero power is one. It's right there. Oh, did I forget one? It is obviously gonna be like me. Maybe I should get a, give myself about a three on that that uh, awake check, huh? <laughs> Thanks, Nina. All right, B. So before I do B, um, there's two ways. There's two ways. I can bring this and switch it down. I can. There's two ways. I can bring it down and then take care of the negative, but it's probably easier to bring through the negative first. I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring through the negative first on B. So I'm going to have an A to the positive 6 over B to the negative 8. Okay, I'm going to do that first. Okay, bring through the negative exponent. So I multiply, I multiply an exponent. And then I'll just bring this term up because it's negative, so I'll have an answer of A6 b8. Okay. Um, this one's interesting. I don't know. There's a couple of ways to do it. I can bring the negative through first, or I can fix what's inside. Um, I think I'm going to do this one slightly different. 
I'm going to 4x 3y first. Okay. So all I did is I brought the x3 down. Okay. That's all I did. Now with the negative exponent, it makes this negative and this negative. So I just switched the whole thing. So this is going to make the x cubed come up and the 4y go down. So it's basically the same rules over and over again. This just tries to make it trickier and trickier, but it's not going to trick me. Nope. Okay, I didn't write this. For, I didn't type this very well. It should be more like this. Okay. A um, couple ways to do this. I think it might be easier just to bring in the negatives. I'll bring in the exponents to both. I think I'll bring in the exponents to both. Let's see. That'd be a b to the negative four over an a to the negative 2 times a, a to the negative 6 over a b to the negative 3, okay? And then I'm going to switch them around. So then I'm going to have, let's see, I'll have a a squared b4 times a b3 over an a6. So I switched all the negatives. Um, and then these two will cancel two of these. So I'm going to have a b to the seventh over an a four. I'm going to run out of time. These short periods are getting me, huh? Okay. Last. This one here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I am not doing well today, huh? B to the 1 on the bottom, right? That would be, gosh darn it, Spencer. <laughs> that would make a B to the 1 on top and a B to the 4 on the bottom and a A to the 4 on the bottom, right? Dang it. I got to stop making mistakes, huh? Hopefully, the afternoon I'll do better, huh? Okay, E. Here's what I'm going to do with E. I'm going to bring this one up. X cubed, X5, plus an X, the negative 2, okay? Then I'm going to distribute. Hopefully, I'm not going to make another dumb mistake. X8 plus X1, because I multiply and add X1, and that's it. That's all I can do. And this one, the bell's going to ring. I'm going to run out of time to do this one. But this is 1 over A plus a 1 over B, all of the negative 1 power, OK? This one's kind of hard. Um, just, I mean, I'll just do it real quick. I need a common denominator to add them. So multiply that B over B, A over A. Feels like a Monday. Is this the actual homework Yeah. Okay. Anyway, this one's going to be a B plus A over an A, B. Yes, yes, the new packet's up on my desk. Okay, there's the answer to that one. Yes, the new packet. Boy, I tell you, 